Hi everyone, it's Kasia from Taramap and if you have followed me for a while you probably won't believe what I'm just about to show you. <laughs> but yeah, the big eyes, they came for me. So I was, I could probably say maybe hate would be too big of a word, but I totally wasn't a fan of Jasmine Beckett Griffith artwork. I mean, you know, art is a very personal style, right? So it's, we either love it, we hate it, we don't care. I wasn't uh, personally neutral about this art. I was just going, what the fuck? <laughs> like I totally couldn't stand the artwork, okay? So of course, recently Natalia started from Uroboros, you know, or Taro Shrink, Natalia started talking about the big eyes and how, you know, when we, um, don't like some art um, or when we not really when a piece of art is not really along our conscious lines that there might be something maybe for us there to dig deeper when it comes to our unconscious blah 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 you know I was laughing I say it often I noticed to my Scorpio friends that some of them or actually most of my Scorpio friends Natalia Victoria you know they would sell eyes to an Eskimo, you know, <laughs> they just have this ability to make you hmm, reconsider your uh, opinions. And since I'm an, a Sagittarius so with Mars in Gemini and Mercury in Sag, you know, I'm open. A woman can change her mind. I'm not um, fast about being, you know, always the same. I love to change. So right now, actually it didn't even start with Natalia in the first place I mean Natalia has planted a seed but then I'm watching YouTube like you know scrolling through all these different videos and suddenly I see Mistress Ray um, I will link hers and Julie's videos in the description box and for Natalia I suggest you subscribe to her newsletter she sends video letter and um, she was talking about oracle decks and those big eyes ones too but uh, back to Mistress Ray, she has um, showed a deck, like a tarot deck, a cutest fucking mini tarot deck that Julie from Peekaboo Rose has created. And I looked at it and I'm thinking, oh my God, I really love it. You could see that Julie, obviously as a creator, knows tarot because she picked most of the archetypes she picked, like the image of artwork that um, Jasmine Beckett Griffith actually uploaded for free use for people. So Julie has created a tarot deck and oracle deck. And yeah, she picked perfect archetypes for uh, the art for, uh, uh, you know, for the archetypes of tarot, really great connection. You can see that she knows tarot and just the size of the deck, how she cut the artwork. I loved it. So I straight away ordered it from make playing cards and then I watched Natalia's video as well and I remembered that she was talking about those decks and oh my god I was looking at all of them at review of all of them and there's quite a lot of you know Lucy Cavendish decks and Jasmine Beckett Griffith decks um, out there but I am not a fan of those like computerized fairies or far away fairies I just love those Mostly I love those close-ups. So, you know, whenever I see this, I'm like, yeah, this is awesome. And now I'm like a big fan of those girls. This is beautiful. Amazing. So I'm showing you like my favorite images. Oh my God. Yes, please. The little match girl. Like beautiful. It's on the box and it's on the book. Um, she's called Snow White, but yeah, that's okay. But I love those close-ups when the eyes do crazy things, you know. <laughs> so this is something that, yeah, I'm kind of much more in tune with. Like all of this, like when there's a lot of stuff happening on the image, mm, it's okay, but I'm not that moved by it. But when I have the close-ups, even this is pretty cool, like the entitlement with Goldilocks. But yeah, this, for example, too cartoonish, like in some way, too like I artificial. <laughs> uh, whereas, yeah, the close-ups, please bring them on. Uh, so I got 
this. I got fairy tale um, by Lucy Cavendish because I thought, you know, I love the subject of fairy tales. I'm interested in fairy tales. I've heard from a couple of people like, um, you know, Natalia mentioned, I think there's Racine from Owl Moon uh, YouTube channel, a couple of other people that Lucy Cavendish maybe is not the easiest writer, but then this book, it's also like quite spot on. It's quite intense. There's a lot of fairy tales that are not beautified. So don't get me wrong. They look like cute girls, but the descriptions and the fairy tales used, they all about like crazy shit fairy tales, most of them anyway. There's a lot of death, a lot of suffering. The fairy tales are not changed for the like Disney World versions. They like proper old folk fairy tales when, you know, when you do wrong, you get punished and when you do right, you get rewarded. So, um, yeah, I pulled a couple of cards for myself and I have to say that some parts of the book um, I'm kind of a bit disappointed in and they bit, um, what, what can I say? I don't know. There's a little bit too too narrow the interpretations i mean maybe it's okay when you get you know um a fairy tale that it's not about everything but just like but yeah if you not if you don't have a relationship issues and you get a fairy tale and it's just about the relationship issues i'm like a little boring you know i'm i just don't like necessarily when the interpretations are very narrow but it's quite intense. This was my, um, was this my first, first pull? Yeah, this was my first pull. So I started reading it and I'm like, stepmother, mother, she killed me. My father, she, uh, he ate me. My sister, Marlinchen, gathered all my bones, tied them in a silken scarf, laid them beneath the juniper tree. I'm like, fuck, <laughs> what is it? So she describes sometimes the fairy tale, sometimes aspect of a fairy tale. And then she gives like little interpretation. Um, and yeah i'm not quite sure i'm like such a huge fan of her writing and how the book is structured i don't know if all of them are like this this is the first oracle deck of lucy cavendish that i have i actually think i met lucy at some point in australia at one of the festivals she's really cool um so greed must be dissolved do not act out of anger or resentment so at the end of it you could just get like all these points which you can pick and choose and which ones, you know, resonate with you. I usually pick and choose what I think it's annoying for me or that I think I don't resonate with it because that's probably mostly unconscious thing that, you know, I can somehow maybe grasp. Um, I haven't read the introduction yet, but there is a big introduction to this deck, how to use it, what the fairy tales are like and so on, and some spreads. Uh, but I pulled, for example, um, one of my favorite fairy tales is The Little Princess. And that's why I also got the deck because um, she's here. So I'm just like going to show you some of these images. I think I've seen, you've seen these ones. Um, a little match girl is so cute. She's so cute too, or they are. Um, Oh, that reminds me of my Chiron stories as well. So the keyword the sensitivity, the princess and the pea. If you ever gotten an astrology reading from me or a Chiron reading, you would probably hear the princess and the pea metaphor with Chiron. Um, I'm looking for Little Mermaid. So this was a fairy tale that I feel particularly um, moved by or, you know, it was something that I was really... I just couldn't believe as a child that there wasn't a f like happy ending. <laughs> you know, when you read different fairy tales and it's like, yeah, 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 sweet, sweet, sweet. And then you read The Little Mermaid, not the Disneyized version, but just a Little Mermaid fairy tale. You're like, what? The prince didn't love her back? What? I, I remember I was like so shocked and like so disappointed and so moved and that she went through so much suffering. I just felt it's so unfair. So sacrifice is the keyword here and I love the image. So I asked, I can't remember. I mean, I do have a picture of it, um, but I don't want to do my personal reading here. But I asked, for example, if you find a fa favorite fairy tale card, you know, you can ask what is this tale telling me right now? 
entitlement, Goldilocks, you know, respecting others, um, uh, having, being entitled, privileged, like, how do I sit with it? So where does it sit with me? You know, how do I, um, how do I deal? And what's unconscious in, uh, in the entitlement department, you know, and how maybe do I disrespect um, other people's beliefs and stuff. So um, there's definitely something to be looked uh, into like I didn't pull a specifically this card for myself when I did the reading but I'm just giving you an example now uh, rites of passage that's what this tale would teach me about I got like a really cool answers when I got it and a voice and it's interesting with the voice because she had an amazing voice and she could uh, sing but she had to lose her voice she couldn't speak when she changed from the mermaid into the human for love oh there's a lot of themes to pick up in the little mermaid fairy tale and i really highly advise you to find the original tale and read it because um in the end you know there is a tiny little bit happy end because she like becomes a fairy and becomes like uh, one with angels or like becomes an angel um but yeah i remember this disappointment and sadness and like, just even anger so finding your voice um rites of passage when you kind of you know she had to leave her family i've done a lot of this in my life and entitlement yeah where did I feel I am entitled? And where did I feel the whole world being entitled? Um, but not me. <laughs> interesting, interesting uh, pulls. So you can do this with your favorite fairy tale. If you find one in here that you like, or if you don't know, you can pull a random card um, and see the Snow Queen. The Snow Queen was another one which I really, really loved. And I thought like, wow, that I was so proud of this girl that she was, yeah, loyalty is a good keyword. I think she, Lucy definitely does a good um, research for, for the tales. And I'm so glad that she didn't pick the, you know, Americanized versions of them. But the original folk tales, folk tales were not pretty in very often. They actually were quite scary. And now I'm thinking, my God, what did we do to children? You know, we like kind of stupid well, like we make children stupid we like trying to protect them from any healthy boundaries really i think fairy tales are way to go like good old fairy tales to like get children and adults um really um get to get children like that there is some boundaries that there is some um consequences for your behavior that you can't just do whatever you fucking want you know i don't know maybe i'm becoming old and frustrated <laughs> but from what i'm seeing there's so many unhappy children so many unhappy adults so many unhappy everybody and um i guess it's you know the poorer the countries the more um community you have together the happier the people seem to be and the more um the richer the countries the the more drama and consumerism and emptiness there is in the culture so let's see i'm curious how i'm going to go with this deck i love the artwork i love some i love the fairy tales i'm kind of mediocre about the descriptions um by lucy but um i got another one of the uh, collaborative oracles i got the vampires oracle so it's coming tomorrow i will check it out and i'm really curious what do you guys think and um by the way this is ps to victoria if you watches this if she watches this are you getting it now victoria or are you still not a fan of the eyes but how can you not be vicky <laughs> bye everyone speak to you soon